What's up, athletes and fans? Welcome to another episode of Athlete POV. I'm your host, Charlie Pellucci. Before this video starts, leave a like, subscribe if you're not already, turn on the notification bell, and leave a comment down below for who you think we should get on this podcast next. One thing I found much, most interesting was in high school, three-sport athlete, and you were like top tier in almost each one of them. I started basketball was like an all, all state or all, all something. And then football, obviously, you're captain. A bunch of other accolades as well. Well, um, how do you man- how do you manage to handle all that um, three sports? Yeah, I think um, you know, in high school, yeah, I played football, basketball, baseball, and you know, I was a I was a captain for all three, and so they were all like super important to me. And I always felt like you know, being a multi sport athlete, um, you know, it kind of helped all aspects of my game in football, and I was actually. Um, basketball was my favorite sport all the way through high school and that's what I was almost expecting to play in college too until I got the Stanford opportunity so um, Mm. yeah I mean I definitely feel like for anybody that you know wants to play college you know any sport I think being a multi-sport athlete it's kind of getting away from most kids like most people like to specialize but I've always felt super passionately about you know the things that I took from basketball and baseball definitely applied over for football so and overall just as like a leadership capabilities and things like that um so yeah i'm all for it <laughs> that's awesome and even when i was in high school my coaches always preached like if you can play two sport af- two sports do it because college coaches they love that they like like to see versatility and stuff like that and i'm sure stanford <laughs> they love that about you probably was, were you getting heavily recruited in basketball too and you ultimately picked football over basketball was that the case yeah, so I, I had a few, um, you know, Division two looks in basketball, and then I was actually planning on, I was actually going to play both football and basketball at a school if I didn't get my Sanford opportunity, so <laughs> it was pretty late uh, in my senior year that, you know, I chose to go to Sanford, so my recruiting process was a little unique compared to other, you know, college football players, but, um, so yeah, that was kind of the deal, I was thinking basketball all the way. Now talk to me about Stanford. Stanford, obviously, very prestigious, not only football, but um, academically, too. Um, was part of the reason you had the opportunity to go to go to Stanford because of your academic success? Do you think that was part of it? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, yeah, I I went on one unofficial visit here and immediately, you know, felt it was different from a lot of other universities, you know, academic wise and football wise. Um, and so, yeah, it definitely played a big role. And I think the biggest thing too was, you know, the type of guy that's like in the locker room, like not just all football talk, but a lot of like intellectual talk and everything like that. So um, it did play a big role in definitely, you know, putting a lot of emphasis on my on my schoolwork and, you know, what my career looks like. I know Stanford talks a lot about like it's not a four year decision, it's a 40 year decision. And so um, that definitely played a big role in my decision for sure. 100 percent. And now I'm sure at Stanford, academic is vigorous. Football is always that vigorous schedule of college athlete. What does a day in the life look like for you at Stanford on a typical day? Yeah, so it kind of, you know, it ranges depending on what, you know, season we're in, if we're in season or off season. So, you know, right now, um, just getting off of this, like this, this past season in the fall, um, it's like our winter quarter is very much, you know, a lot of guys on the team will take a lot more like courses and take a lot of their like biggest loads for school. Um, but we're still, you know, we're still training every single day. So we'll, on most days, we'll either have a run or a lift in the morning. Um, and then we do like player led practices is what we call them. And so, you know, we're on the field mm. and um, just doing a bunch of like individual drills and then we'll do a little, you know, seven on seven in team, you know, periods together, which is good to get a little competitive. But um, so we still, you know, have quite a bit of a time dedicated to football, but we still class class in our off season is the biggest thing. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we got spring ball coming up. Uh, in the next few weeks and so that's when things get pretty busy where we'll have you know special teams and offense and defensive meetings in the morning for a few hours and then have a little bit of window for class and then come right back for you know warm up and practice and everything like that so it's definitely (laughs) a big time commitment even in off season 100 percent. and now at stanford of course every game is a big game probably at any college what's like the biggest um maybe not like the biggest just like the best stadium atmosphere you've been a part of yeah, that's a good question. Aside, aside from a home game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember, I think it was my sophomore year, uh, we went to Oregon, and that was always, a, it was a pretty cool atmosphere. And I mean, the COVID year took a lot of, like, 
obviously we didn't have any fans. And it's so true. It was cool to just like see the stadium as a whole, even though there wasn't a lot of fans. But I think from this past year when fans were allowed, I would say either um, when we went to go play USC was very fun in the Coliseum. That was a fun stadium to play mm. in. And then we also played uh, Arizona State, and their fans were, were pretty wild and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty loud. So those were yeah. probably my two favorites. Very cool. And I'm sure uh, more big things are coming wherever you guys play. Every, every, I feel like every, even like in high school, I feel every game progressively gets more big as the season progresses just because either you're heading into the playoffs or you're heading trying to get into a bowl game or the playoff, whatever. And uh, it just magnifies every week. <laughs> Especially at Stanford, you guys shoot for being the best. So, you know, um, as, as every other school. <laughs> Right. So now, what is next year? What does the future look like for you guys? And I saw you actually switch positions on the roster. Um, what was behind that? And uh, what are you looking forward to next year? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, individually with me, um, yeah, I mean, I came in as a safety and played for two years. And then, you know, it just felt like it kind of came from me first, but kind of talking with the coaching staff, just with my size, I right. felt like, you know, I wanted to be more of an athletic linebacker compared to like a really big safety and so that was just kind of like a you know a technical decision that we kind of made and mm. I made with the coach and staff and it definitely you know I think it improved my overall ability to you know to make an impact on special teams and you know and compete for a job there so that was kind of how that went down and then I am you know I think the team is looking I'm, I'm really excited for this next season like <laughs> definitely you know this last season did not perform as well as we would have liked um definitely feel like the talent was there for sure and the leadership was there but you know just when it came down to you know the x's and o's and, and um just competing in that way definitely didn't prepare the way that we wanted to and so um i think you know a lot of that emphasis during this off season of just you know what can we do where you know put ourselves in the best position for success coming up into these next this next season i think so i'm super excited with our talent this year too yeah. a, lot of, a lot of guys coming back from last year Definitely. And you mentioned how the move from safety to linebacker, you thought you'd be like a more athletic linebacker. And you're seeing that, I think, more in like at the NFL really too now, where like every linebacker mainly can now go into coverage, drop back 15, 20 yards sometimes even. Um, what do you think of that? And do you think that, um, well, obviously you just said it can be beneficial. What, have you see, what are some results you've seen from more uh, like, you know, athletic people on the field and linebackers, not just like big people that can stop the run every down. Yeah, I, th I think um, that would definitely played into my position and my situation too, because especially with our defensive scheme, you know, our linebackers are very much in the coverage. Um, and so, you know, dealing a lot with not just the run game and, and stopping the run, but also, you know, being in coverage and having specific, you know, guys every single down. And so, I think, um, you know, mentally it's it's pretty difficult because, you know, you have to be able to read, you know, the offensive linemen, just read passive run, and there's a lot of, mm. you know, depending on our coverage, you know, there's a lot of uh, patterns that we have to recognize and, you know, things that kind of go on in the middle of the play that a lot of people don't realize when they're just watching the game. So there's right. a lot of, you know, mental gymnastics that goes on. But, I mean, that's obviously what we do the whole year is, you know, we work to be um, super prepared in the playbook in that way, and so we can just kind of react and play when we're out on the field. But um, yeah, I think I think being an athletic linebacker, um, that's definitely what a lot of you know NFL scouts are looking for, and that's definitely what it's coming down to: your ability to you know take on 300-pound linemen for the run, and then also be able to run with you know their fastest tight end and running back. So definitely, definitely. And now, as as a linebacker myself, back in high school a couple years ago, I completely understand what you mean by reading stuff that no one else can see or no one else really understands if you're just watching from above. So, uh, yeah, and then you mentioned mentally. What do you think is the biggest, like, mental factor in your game that helps you out in a sense of just clearing your mind? Mm. Yeah, I think that, I mean, that is one topic that I am, you know, very passionate about is actually, you know, for my career, I want to get into sports psychology, which is, you know, focuses a ton on, you know, preparing an athlete mentally so that they can just perform physically on the field. And so that is a big focus, um, you know, just with our with our individual position group is, you know, watching hours and hours of film each day. So like even the slightest, you know, change in alignment or, um, you know, depending on what coverage we're called, like, you know, we're almost primed to like see that and to just react because that's, you know, what makes a really, really solid player, even if they're not physically or mentally like 
strong enough to you know compete at the highest level is like if you can make quick quick decisions and then like just go and like shoot the gap like you'll put yourself in a lot better positions than most so that's most of our emphasis especially here at Stanford like we have a pretty complex defensive scheme and so a lot of our time goes into you know being prepared to to go on the field and just execute yeah I'm sure once in like after you do it so long it just comes muscle memory and that's the goal because when you know what you're doing you play faster you know that's that's probably the main focus you have like the ideology yeah. there <laughs> yeah so um if you had any advice to give somebody that was maybe like struggling mentally that's also an athlete what what would you say to them and any advice you might have yeah i think um probably the biggest principle that i've learned just like in my last few years is getting to the point where you know you can look back at all of the work that you've put in and like not being able to regret anything um like we have this mm-hmm. quote that we kind of base some of our you know mental game on and it's this idea of let me see if i can remember it um like you get, basically you get to choose like the pain of discipline or the pain of regret and you know the pain of regret is always the worst option to go with you know like mm. because i mean w- you know waking up early for the early morning lifts and you know preparing and watching film like that's you know it takes a lot of discipline and it's hard sometimes for sure but you know I think the biggest piece of advice I would give someone is you know the pain of regret is you know hurts so much more like if you're you know if you're put into a position into a position and you're not ready you know there's there's a lot that goes into that and you know be disappointed in yourself so I would just say you know given whichever you know athletic ability that you have you know do everything in your power to you know, truly put yourself in the best position. And then I think regardless of the outcome, mm. you know, you're going to be proud of whatever you, whatever you put out there. Definitely. And then what, what, with, with athletic minds, one of the main, main like principles, as you said before, um, one of the things we go as is consistency is key. Cause as soon as you light up for a second, say you miss a workout, which I know obviously has repercussions, but say you miss something, you don't do something the way you're supposed to every single time, like you are supposed to that's when you fall behind. That's when people catch up. That's when mm-hmm. bad things happen generally, you know? So completely understand what you're trying to say there. And um, yeah, just not giving up and do the hard things because you can either do the hard things or not do them. And you know, that's, that's where people are made. It's where characters built. <laughs> oh yeah, especially at this level too. You know, you know, everybody on every other college football team is doing, you know, same thing what you're doing or even more and so you gotta you know you gotta it's definitely a a competition with yourself like that's you know i'm pretty big with the idea of comparison you know much i would much rather compare myself to who i was yesterday than comparing myself to you know other people because i feel like that's the biggest key um you know because and people are in different situations than you but you also have to know you know what your opponent's doing and so um you know you have to be cognizant of both factors for sure definitely Ah, that's about it. I want to thank you for coming on with me. And uh, another episode of Athlete POV, we have Jason Cool, uh, inside linebacker, University of Stanford. Um, Thank you for coming on, man. (laughs) Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course.